On March 20th, 1966, in Dexter, Michigan, one of the most infamous UFO sightings in history took place here on Frank Manor's farm when Frank Manor, his family, and dozens of other witnesses saw a domed, oval-shaped object with a quilted surface actually land in a nearby swamp. The object had lights in the center and on each end. Two Dexter police deputies, Fitzpatrick and McFadden, arrived on the scene and initiated a search to find the object with Manor. Manor, along with his son, followed the unidentified object into the swamp area, but as they came closer, it slowly rose up, moved right above their heads, and quickly disappeared into the night. The officers witnessed the UFO over the swamp, and they were shocked at the maneuverability of the UFO. The UFO went right over the aim of their flashlights and darted into the sky. As more officers were moving toward the scene of the landing, Officer Robert Hartwell of the Dexter Division saw a UFO actually buzz his car. There were numerous sightings during the Michigan UFO wave of 1966. This case attracted national attention as Project Blue Book, set up by the U.S. Air Force, sent Dr. J. Allen Hynek to investigate the sighting reports. At first, Hynek agreed that there was something going on in the Michigan skies, but after he had consulted with the Blue Book headquarters, he changed his mind and said that the sightings were nothing more than swamp or marsh gas. Hynek said, quote, Marsh gas usually has no smell, but sounds like the small popping explosion similar to a gas burner igniting. The gas forms from decomposition of vegetation. It seems likely that as the present spring thaws came, the gas is methane, hydrogen sulfide, and phosphine, resulting from decomposition of organic materials, were released." End quote. Manor was furious at what many thought was a simple government cover-up. He said, quote, I know every pothole in this county. I've never seen anything like it. There's nothing wrong with my eyes, and my son has 20-20 vision. We can't both be wrong." End quote. The case in Dexter became so nationally recognized, even Walter Cronkite of CBS, one of the most famous news shows in history, did a national story on the incident. Reports of flying saucers are nothing new. From the beginning of recorded time, men have been seeing unexplainable things in the sky. And there's no reason to doubt they saw something. The question is, was what they saw really there? And what was it they really saw? The great flying saucer mystery of 1966 began here, near Dexter, Michigan, late in March. And before the month was out, flying saucers were being reported from New Jersey to California, from Colorado to Long Island, from Ohio to Georgia. Invariably, the first reports were brought in by quiet and sober citizens like Frank Manor. Father of ten children, a countryman, a hunting man, a man used to wooded swamplands by night. The Air Force sent its chief scientific consultant on UFOs, Professor J. Allen Hynek, to check the Michigan sightings. Dr. Hynek agreed that the good citizens of Michigan had seen something in the marshlands. He thought they had seen marsh gas. Even former president and current Michigan U.S. congressman at the time, Gerald Ford, wanted better answers than what the Air Force was giving. If you really believe in flying saucers, you've called for a congressional investigation. Dave, uh, we've had several uh, incidents in Michigan in the last uh, week, uh, incidents that uh, many reliable, good citizens felt were uh, sufficient to justify some action by our government and not the kind of flippant answer that was given by the Air Force uh, where they passed it off as a, a swamp gas. Project Blue Book, headquartered at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, was terminated December 17, 1969. Of a total of 12,618 sightings reported to Project Blue Book, 701 still remain unidentified. UFO sightings are one of the most consistent, unanswerable questions in the world, as sightings still occur every day. Your hometown, Dexter, Michigan, was home to one of the most unanswerable questions. With all of the evidence stacked up, even you should truly evaluate what you truly believe about alternative life forms. I'm Cameron LaFontaine from thesquall.com. Thanks for watching.